here again, and this time going over the all-important attacking. This is where a lot of people probably want to be with their RTS, where you know you, you start to get the units moving pretty well, and then you start making the units interact with each other and attack. And this was a pain in the butt, but it works pretty darn well now that I've uh, gotten it all debugged and everything. So let's go into the project. And I'll actually need to add some uh, enemy units here. God dang it, copied my projector. Get some enemy units here. There we go. Face. And we'll change their alliance. Where is it? There it is. Alright. So if I play this, I'm going to have yeah, two green guys and a bunch of these red guys. I'm on the red team. Yay. And so we're going to go ahead and tell some of these units to, or actually I'm going to tell one of the units to attack. So I right click on that unit and you can't see anything attacking, but there is. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on uh, here. If I'm moving a unit around while they're attacking, they still attack. If I move a unit into range, he still attacks. And he has to decide which one to attack. Now if I tell him to attack a certain one, he's going to attack that one. And then he's, you know, he's going to go to that one and attack and stop. Now this sounds... I mean, it doesn't sound simple, but there was a lot of... Um, testing and debugging I had to do on this because it was just it was becoming a mess to do so I have this attack tech script and I just you know I declare some variables out here of uh, damage sight range attack range duration and just a time attack counter so on start just to explain the attack script that th that I have I'm going to get the attack range from the unit. The unit I'm just using as kind of a, a, a storage area of its general properties. So for attacking, you know, it has these properties. So I just get those. It's easier to do that way. Um, so then I get the, I just get, you know, sight range, attack range, damage, and its duration for attacking. Then. Don't worry about begin, end, or uh, any of the different begins because I'm gonna have multiple begins. Uh, you know, begin at wanting to attack when it you tell it pos a position or a unit, or you just want the uh, attack script to start. So, in my update function, I have if it's being told to not attack or actually to not stop attacking. That means it's being told to attack. Sounds counterintuitive to say that, but it makes more sense to type it because, you know, if you want to stop attacking, you tell it to stop attack. Um, then I check if the unit has a target. That means that it is uh, being commanded to attack this game object by the player. That means that's when you have a unit selected and you right click on an enemy unit and it's it's telling it to attack that unit then it's going to begin towards that unit. This is where everything starts. So we go to the begin dang it. We go to the begin function where it's, it has a parameter of game object and then it checks if the it first checks if the attack buff, which is the counter for it, is less than attack duration, then add time. So, you know, I have, I think it's a one second um, 
attack duration so this will count up to one and then after that it'll stop just so that you know it doesn't go to infinity or you know get extremely large because once you have a lot of units and you're having an attack counter for every single one of them that's a lot of unnecessary processing that you're doing so that just gets rid of some of the processing because it was slowing down my uh, processing quite a bit so then I check if the distance between the unit and itself is greater than its attack range so that means it can't attack it's out of range then it needs to check if it has a move component um, because if it doesn't that means it's a turret or it's a it's a building that can attack you know it can't move but it can attack in a certain range then it gets if the move script has ended and it is not calculating a path now this is a lot of things that I've added new to the move script um, because I needed this separate interactivity between it um, you know that I needed that so I added it because if it's calculating its path that means it's it's idle but it still needs to move so when I, I had a bunch of units and they're all calculating their paths um, it wouldn't know that it's moving yet so it hasn't necessarily ended uh, so it would keep calling this line here to tell move to begin towards this position over and over so it kept firing so what I did is I just said it's calculating its path right now so if it's calculating don't ask it so then on to if the unit is out or actually in range that's the else statement I'm going to tell it to stop moving and set its priority to 2 that means that it's attacking then it's gonna look at the uh, units position you know plus that that difference there so that it's not looking up or down and then check if the attack counter is greater than the attack duration then it can attack now I actually could show you guys with attacking because it does draw an, draw a ray I just had gizmos turned off and then it uh, takes the unit's health that it's attacking and subtracts the amount of damage that it's doing and then it resets the counter now the uh, this move function is very key that I had this false here because what that does as we come over this uh, move script over here this is a, a new variable I added to the uh, move uh, start function or whatever as not interrupt interruptible that means if it's true then when it's moving it's not interruptible you can't you can't tell it to attack or it won't attack another unit it'll just move to that location and then once it reaches that location it'll do whatever it's, it, it does so from the player when it's commanded and it, you know the player commands the unit to uh, to move that's set to true because when you want to move a unit you don't want it to be interrupted by attacking because what I was happening I was trying to do this whole uh, I tried to do this whole timer thing before where like you would stop the attack script for a certain amount of time and it just wasn't working so I added this interruptible boolean to it and it works perfectly where if you have also turn gizmos on for you guys so you can also see the units attacking if I moved a unit into range um, I wouldn't be able to move it away from the other units because it would be attacking and when it's attacking it sets the move component to end so you you know you, you ran into a lot of problems there 
So that's what that not not interruptible, it's kind of hard to say, uh, Boolean does. Because if it's false, then it's going to say that, well, it can check for other units in, in its range. So then I do some uh, just some other checks if it received its center. Because what happened is if I, for these units that aren't necessarily being told to move, if they see a unit within their range, they want to move to that location where they're in range to attack. Um, but they couldn't do that because their center was actually zero zero zero. So when they they calculated their offset, it would offset them to a very strange location, and it made sense after I kind of looked at it because they kept moving further and further away from zero. But it, it just kind of took me a little bit because you're not sending. Uh, this relative center function to the unit if it's being AI controlled. So I just do that where I set the squad center to its center. So you know it's it's not offsetting at all. So you know then I get do some flocking guys and you you, you guys have seen this before. And uh, for that I mean you guys have. have I've gone over my move script before, so just trying to l see if there's anything relating to attacking that's real obvious. Um, I don't think so. So, kind of going over. So when the f when you tell attack to begin, it tells a stop attack to be false. That means you know over here it's gonna be you know turn out to be true. So when you end, you tell it to stop attack true, meaning to, you're telling it to stop attacking, and you set its priority to zero. Um, so for that, that I mean that's about it, guys, for uh, attacking. Um, I don't know if I explained it very well because it's kind of a. Uh, very difficult process to get where I got with this because um, of how many different ways I tried to do it. I mean, I tried first without doing many checks at all, just doing begin and ends, and it was giving me such problems. Then I tried timers, and that was just going to become extremely messy. And then I did the interruptible, and that, that works really well. So, um, thank you guys for watching. I know that you know it's kind of confusing cuz I can't really go into everything but that's how I did it um so thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time